Let's talk about unidirectionality. Unidirectional data flow is the opposite of MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. The model is like state, so let's say that's items. The view is component, so let's say cart. And what is the controller? Well, I would argue that a controller is something that controls things. In this case, it's going to be an event handler. So add to cart, maybe. Um, okay, so let's say the user is going to click the add to cart button. And so that will be uh, a call to there. And add to cart is going to update the items. It's controlling the item state. And let's say when it does that, it has to also update a total. And let's add a total with tax after that. And of course, the component needs to display those states. Okay, but now we need to implement some more uh, functionality. So let's say there's another controller, uh, remove from cart and change quantity. So a lot of things happening here, a bunch of controllers and a lot of them all updating the same state. This is how MVC traditionally works. Here's a question. Where's the logic for calculating the total and the total with tax? You'd hope that somebody extracted it to a shared utility function, but you know what? There's no guarantee. It might be and often is duplicated across a bunch of event handlers. Okay, here's an extremely simple example of what this code might look like. Nine simple lines of code. If you're a React or a Svelte developer, you might be thinking this is trivial, but just imagine that this is shared state. Yeah. So this has an event handler controlling multiple states, so this is MVC. Um, how do we make it unidirectional? We need to introduce reactivity with maybe ArcGIS or signals or selectors, atoms, whatever. But I'm going to do signals. So first, let's replace the initial thing with uh, create signal. Um, so now we've got items and set items. And now we can use that down there. Now we can set items and pass in the new item there. Okay, now is the interesting part. In the declaration of each piece now, each piece of state, we need to reference what it needs. So here we are creating a memo and we are taking the items. We're calling those because this is all JS uh, syntax. Um, and we are reducing and this is the logic for calculating a total. And because this is declared in place, we can now remove that down there. And then we just repeat for total with tax. And there we go. Each state is now referencing what it needs on its own to determine its value throughout time. Now the logic is co-located where it's relevant. Why was a function called add to cart concerned with taxes? It doesn't make sense, but it makes perfect sense that a variable called total with tax has a tax rate in this declaration. And if we had the other event handlers, we would not be able to duplicate any logic because that logic is co-located with the state itself. And there's not even a temptation to copy and paste and, and forget to uh, extract the shared logic. See how many arrows merge when we make our state management more reactive. Here's a component in the Chlora Maps app where uh, you have a controller that's copied in two different files. This is the exact same code. Um, and when I moved it downstream, I literally couldn't do this because they were going to be in the same place. They couldn't have the same name. And I had to remove some duplicated code. So this accounted for a lot of the lines of code removed putting things more downstream, making things more unidirectional. I did this with a few functions. Here's another one. The interesting thing about this one is they're actually different from each other. And I did notice a few that were that had slight differences. And these actually are equivalent. It's just that they were made different. So over time, your duplicate code will uh, deviate and get harder and harder to fix. Sometimes this actually can cause a bug so when your code is co-located 
by what it's relevant to, you'll be able to see discrepancies and iron them, iron them out and remove um, duplicate code if, if possible. I want to draw attention to the color of the arrows here. I'm, I colored the arrow by where it where the line of code was that was creating the relationship. So green means the cart itself was referencing these uh, states and drive states. Um, the yellow, orange, and red arrows here meant that these controllers were referencing the items and controlling them. And when I changed it to derived state, when I pushed the logic downstream, total now contained the code and referenced items by itself. And same with total with tax. Now just from this, can you tell why we're not completely unidirectional yet? We still have controllers and they're still modifying external states. So the original Flux and, and React Talk talked about external control being a source of bugs. And the truth is we have logic that's scattered in different controllers um, that's all controlling the same state. So unidirectional state management isn't just about derived states. It's about the state itself. And this is what's missing from so many state management libraries. The point of Flux and Redux, the, the point was never really fully absorbed by people. Let's make our state reactive too. Let's show three controllers with 19 lines of code. And I'll use state adapt. SolidJS and Jotai don't support this and Redux would be too much code. First, we make a store. Then we put the add logic inside of it and we can remove it now to make space. Um, and we need a simple event source for adding. And we need to reference that in the store. Now the store is going to listen to that and and change when it emits. Um, and this sources object is equivalent of a Redux reducer. The logic is in the adapter, so it can be easily reused in multiple stores. But the thing that actually causes the store to change is that sources object. So that should be thought of as the reducer. And now we need to get the, the signal from the store. In the future, I'll add better utilities for solid, but this is what I have for now. And let's just skip to the end. So that's what it looks like. It's a little more syntax than before, but I chose this syntax uh, for what I'm going to show next. But the main thing is now all the change logic is co-located in the store. It moved downstream from event handlers to the state's declaration. If there was duplicate logic or bugs from inconsistencies, we could easily see them. And this is the entire reason Flux was created. I feel like the industry didn't actually uh, absorb why Flux was created, what the entire point of it was. But this is why, co-location. So this is more scalable than Jotai or Vanilla Solid, and it's about the same lines of code as before. And here's how the diagram of the data flow changes. Notice the arrow is going to items, change color. That's to show, now that they're kind of the pink purple color, um, that it's the items declaration that's referencing those event sources. So it's in control now. But it's also even more unidirectional than Redux because the store is referencing the observables so we can have declarative side effects too. Imagine we have to call a server to add items. We'll change the add source to a regular subject, uh, then define a source that includes the side effect and reference that in the store. Okay, let's simplify this diagram. Okay, now the diagram looks like this. With RxJS, not only can state be downstream from events, but events can be downstream from other events. Now, every single variable here, every single uh, declaration is referencing what it needs by itself. All the arrows that are going downstream are the color of the thing they're pointing to, except for one, that uh, that green arrow from cart to add. If you want that to be orange, uh, you need a framework called CycleJS. But usually it's not that important because 
these are uh, DOM events that are really easy for developers to track. So yeah, but just look how satisfying that would be. That would be awesome.